seen the landscape change from desert and like no houses. I don't know if it's Bahrain's growth or just the world's growth. It made me more aware and made me value the way things were and how things were done historically and why it made sense. And it still makes sense. To make garments that live with you throughout your life, if they're well taken care of, if they're mended, if they're darned, they can live as long as you can live. It's just what kind of value you place on the garment. I'm really inspired by these Berber women and I was intrigued by the fact that they created their own textiles to sustain their lives and that the women were the breadwinners. I love that idea, it just like inspired me and I was like, oh, I want to start weaving. <laughs> I want to make my own textiles too. And so I kind of taught myself to, to weave and create my own cloth for the collections. Once I moved back here, I started to discover there was an immense culture of weaving in Bahrain. Abu Assam was the initial weaver I, I started working with. He was just like so generous and so helpful and so happy to collaborate and work with me to create the textiles. Everything, of course, takes so much time, um, and that's kind of beautiful in the sense that it's very much about the making process. It's blood, sweat, and tears that have gone into it, literally. A mentor once told me that the garments that look the simplest actually are the hardest to create. We dye all the garments naturally. In the last collection, we even used walnut hulls. It's kind of an interesting chemistry experiment. <laughs> I was in um, fine arts. I was doing mostly sculpture work. I think it just allowed me to think and create in a certain way. I always think about clothing as a sculpture that's kind of developing around a woman or helping a woman create a shell almost to protect her against the world.